in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Welcome to you all to our Mass this morning. More than one technical gremlin this morning, not least we had no internet in church. I fixed that. The cable had come out of the router in my living room, and then we had no picture, and I fixed that as well. Perhaps I'm in the wrong career. Special welcome to those of you who join us for sacramental moments, to Noah and Angeline who make their first communion, and to Roy Shin who is today to be confirmed as part of today's liturgy. Welcome to your family who are here to pray and support you. And let me suggest, as I have suggested at every sacramental mass, of which this is the last one this weekend, that you pick one of those names Noah, Angeline, Roishin, and you hold that person in prayer during this Mass. Welcome if you are joining us via YouTube, you can hopefully see and hear us, and welcome as well if you're listening on your telephone. We begin by calling to mind our sins, and indeed in today's Gospel we are given by Jesus in Luke the Lord's Prayer, which says, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Those two things go together. You can't be forgiven if you are will not willing to forgive. So to prepare our hearts and minds to rejoice in the forgiveness of God's word and the gift of his body and blood, we first call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to bring us the promise of reconciliation and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Each day you feed us with the gift of your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, have mercy on us, for we have sinned against you. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said, how great an outcry there is against Sodom and Gomorrah. How grievous is their sin. I propose to go down and see whether or not they have done all that is alleged in the outcry against them that has come up to me. I am determined to know. The man left there and went to Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Approaching him, he said, Are you really going to destroy the just man with the sinner? Perhaps there are fifty just men in the town. Will you really overwhelm them? Will you not spare the place for the fifty just men in it? Do you not think of doing such a thing to kill the just man with the sinner? Treating just and sinner alike, do you not think of it? Will the judge of the whole earth not administer justice? The Lord replied, If at Sodom I find fifty just men in the town, I will spare the whole place because of them, Abraham replied. I am bold indeed to speak like this to my Lord. I who am dust and ashes, but perhaps the fifty just men lack five. Will you destroy the whole city for five? No, he replied, I will not destroy it. If I find 40, 45 just men there. Again, Abraham said to him, perhaps there will only be 40 there. I will not do it, he replied, for the sake of the forty. Abraham said, I trust my Lord will not be angry, but give me leave to speak. Perhaps there will only be thirty there. I will not do it, he replied, if I find the thirty there. He said, I am bold indeed to speak like this, but perhaps there will only be twenty there. I will not destroy it, he replied, for the sake of the twenty, he said. I trust my Lord will not be angry if I speak once more. Perhaps there will only be ten. I will not destroy it, he replied, for the sake of the ten. The word of the Lord. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth before the angels. I will bless you. I will adore you before the holy temple. I thank you for the faithfulness and love which excel all we ever know, ever, we ever knew of you on the day I called. You answered, you increased the strength of my soul. The Lord is high, yet he looks on the lowly. And the haughty he knows from affair afar, though I walk in the midst of affliction, you give me life and frustrate my foes. You stretch out your hand and save me. Your hand will do all things for me. Your love, O oh Lord, is eternal. Discard the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. You have been buried with the Christ when you were baptized and by, the, and by baptism. Two, you have been raised up with him through your belief in, belief in the power of God who raised him from the dead. You were, you were dead because of you were sinners and had not been circumcised. 
He has brought you to life with him. He has forgiven us all our sins. He has overridden the law and cancelled every record of the debt that we pay. He has done away with it by nailing to the cross. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. The word has made flesh and lived among us. To all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, say this when you pray. Father, may your name be held holy. Your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive each one who is in debt to us, and do not put us to the test. He also said to them, suppose one of you has a friend, and goes to him in the middle of the night to say, my friend, lend me free leaves, loaves, because a friend of mine on his travels has just arrived at my house and I have nothing to offer him. And the man answers from inside the house, do not bother me, the door is bolted now, and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up to give it to you. I tell you, if the man does not get up and give it to him for friendship's sake, persistence will be enough to make him get up and give his friend all he wants. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find it. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For the one who asks always receives. The one who searches always finds. The one who knocks will always have the door open to him. What father among you would hand his son a stone when he asked for bread, or hand him a snake instead of a fish, or hand him a scorpion if he asked for an egg. If you then, who are evil, know how to give your children what is good, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in getting on for what is now nearly three decades of Christian ministry in a variety of different contexts, the one thing I have begun to see ever more clearly as the years have gone by is the centrality to a priest's ministry of his life of prayer. Of all the many things I might do on a weekly, indeed a daily basis, that time of stillness is the one 
indispensable factor which I dare not do without. And if you've ever wondered whether or where the words I speak to you now come from, the answer is quite simple. It is usually from time spent, usually on my own, in this very building, sitting on the front row there, in stillness, silence and prayer in a ministry that is very demanding and about to get even more demanding. It is time with the Lord. Time in stillness, time with the scriptures, time where, to quote John Henry Newman, heart speaks to heart. It is then that, if you like, one's ministry is re-energized, given a renewed focus, and indeed strengthened and supported. It's a cliche, but it's true, you know, and I have seen this myself. When a priest falls off the wayside, falls off his perch, as his were, comes unstuck, the first thing that goes, long before anything is public, is his private prayer life. You can sometimes see it in their breviary, where it's got an inch of dust on top of it, because they haven't picked it up for years. But I want to say to you as well, that the extent to which you are engaged with your faith probably bears a direct correlation to the quality of your life of prayer. Now, I'm not expecting you to pray like me. You're not meant to. You're not a priest. Or at least you're not this kind of priest. But to be a Christian, it means that you must be somebody who prays in at least some way, daily, regularly. Your Christian faith, my Christian faith, is about your ongoing relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and the bedrock of any relationship is communication. Time spent with one another. And obviously those of you with lots of kids and busy lives and jobs, etc, etc, no, you can't, as I said last week, you can't become a Carmelite you're not meant to, but you are meant to pray every day. And I don't mean just praying for a parking space. I don't mean just asking St. Anthony, where are my car keys? I mean a significant sacrifice of time to be with the Lord. That should be the engine room of your Christian life. And the extent to which you engage with that is the barometer of the extent to which this Jesus stuff, all that we do here, is real, alive and active. If your faith is a little dry or habitual or customary, just ask yourself, do I pray every day? And you may well get the answer to the question as to why. Prayer is not an optional extra for nuns, priests, religious. So having said that, let me just look at today's Gospel, that famous story of the institution of the Lord's Prayer and see what that might say to us who want to be people of prayer. You see, the first thing that always strikes me, and I know I've mentioned this before, but this is obvious but well worth drawing attention to. Jesus is asked by the disciples, Lord, teach us to pray. And in answer to that request, he doesn't write a book you know, a thick volume, prayer for beginners. <laughs> Neither does he give them a technique. It's not yoga, feng shui, 
Reiki, mindfulness, or whatever's trendy at the moment. He simply says, when you pray, say this. And that prayer he gives us at one level, yes, it is of infinite depth, but it's also incredibly simple. When we pray, it is simple as this. You speak to God. You spend time in silence with God. He speaks to you. It's two friends. And when friends get together, they share time with one another. They speak one to another. Beautifully simple. Whoever said prayer was complex? Although I'm coming to that bit in a minute. And what I want to say is when you speak to God, you must tell it like it is. When you sit with your friend, especially if it's a proper friend, a deep relationship, you share what matters to you most. If you're fed up, tell God. If you're naffed off, tell God. If you're angry with him, tell him. He can take it, he's bigger than you. If you struggle to believe he's real, tell him. You see, the problem is that when we pray, we tend to treat God like royalty or an esteemed guest. We take him into the front room of our lives. You know how grannies used to have a front room that was always immaculate, where special guests went, and they would never in a million years be allowed into the kitchen. That's how we perhaps treat God. I'll keep him in the front room, and when he comes, he gets the best crockery. I make sure that the teenagers are out, because they're rebellious and noisy and I serve the finest cake and breathe a sigh of relief when he's gone. When you pray, let God into the mess, metaphorically at least, of your spiritual kitchen. Let him see that the bin needs emptying. Let him see that you haven't washed up since last night and it's all caked and dried on. Because you need to be real when you come to God in prayer. The purest prayer is that that comes from the heart. And I'll give you an example of pure prayer. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? That's Jesus telling God how it is. And it's a heart speaking to heart. So, next time you pray, go for it. Tell it like it is. I'm fed up, I'm tired, I'm angry, I'm exhausted. This is not fair. Because like all good friends, when you come to him in prayer, you should be honest. He knows anyhow. But be honest, and you might find that this prayer thing comes alive. So there you are, devastatingly simple. Tell it like it is. But the flip side of that, of course, is that prayer is incredibly complex. Do you know, I thought that this morning when I came into this church early and prayed for an hour. What am I doing? Sitting on that front row. Did you see that James Webb telescope image of a very distant part of the universe? You know the James Webb telescope that's just started working and they pointed it at a bit of sky and they opened the shutter and got an incredible image of stuff Billions of light years away, the mind boggles, you can barely take in the infinite vastness of the universe. And here's the thing I don't get. 
when I sit in this church and pray, the creator of all that stuff is more present to me than I am to myself. How does that make sense? I don't know. No wonder, actually, if you're befuddled in your life of prayer, if you sometimes wonder, am I actually praying? Am I doing this right? Actually, that's no bad thing. Because when we say that, we give testimony to the magnitude of what it is that we claim we are able to do. That the creator of that vast universe, did you see that red blob that was on that image? that he's so far away that the light has stretched because the universe is expanding, whatever that means, as that light journeys towards us, it's 30.5 billion light years away, whatever that means. All I know is you can't walk there. That is to whom I sit and you hopefully sit at some point each day and commune with. No wonder we struggle. And be very careful of people who talk too much about my mate Jesus. Jesus told me this morning, yeah, it don't work like that. This is the creator of all that is. Not your pocket Tamagotchi toy to suit your own agenda, beliefs or passions. Those of you who are making your first communion this morning, it gets worse because... Not only is that creator for you in prayer, but today the creator rests on your hand as you take and eat. How does that happen? Or indeed, if you're about to receive the fullness of the gift of the Holy Spirit, through whom all things were made, even that red blob on that James Wedd image is poured into the heart of the believer. If you're scratching your head when you pray, you're probably getting it right. Because it's a mystery. How can I, how can you commune with the creator of all this? And yet the truth is, somehow, you can. Amazing, really. Then finally, let me just reflect on part of our vocation as a church when we pray. You know, we live in a very increasingly secular world and society. It's nothing new, really. Look at the first reading, where Abraham has to plead for God's mercy for a city that has fallen by the wayside. That is our vocation. Not to moan about it and criticise it, but to look at it through the eyes of mercy and pray. Father, forgive. They know not what they do. I often think this, you know, at Mass, not so much on Sunday, but you will know Mass is celebrated every day. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, in this parish between the two churches. And I often think, especially when it's a smaller Mass in the week, what are we doing? We're lifting up to God His Son's sacrifice. For Wheelie Castle, where many are lukewarm or stone cold in their faith, or similarly, of course, Bartley Green, when Mass is offered there. It is the duty of every Christian to hold the world in prayer and to intercede like Abraham. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, take pity. Lord, grant us your peace. I suppose we should pray, as somebody once put it, with the newspaper in one hand and the Bible in the other and draw those two strands together. Because if we don't pray for Wheelie Castle, well, one or two of our ecumenical friends might, but not many others actually will. The Adventure of Prayer. I don't know if any of you have ever been to a Quaker service. If you've been, you'll know they're very quiet. Because generally speaking, they don't have any words. But I remember going once to a Quaker service, and it was extremely powerful. They did this. 
Did you know there are 58 words in the Lord's Prayer? So what they did in an hour is at minute one they said the Lord's Prayer and then once a minute somebody said one of the words. So first minute, hour, minute. Second minute, Father. I had an hour to reflect on each word. And it was a very powerful thing to do. You might like to try it, because usually, let's be honest, when we say the Lord's Prayer, I think this morning at Mass, it'll be the fifth time I've said it already this morning, we normally say it at a million miles an hour, excuse me, especially if you're Irish. Take time this week to drink deeply of those words that Jesus gave us, especially perhaps even the first two words, our Father, not Almighty God, but our Father. And if you haven't started yet, this Sunday, let it be the day you begin the adventure of prayer, time with Jesus every day to recognise your relationship with him, to pierce the mystery of the God beyond all unknowing and to find your answer to that question that the disciples asked then and many of us still ask today, myself included. Lord, teach me. Help me to pray. Right, Roy Shin and your sponsor, please, to come to the front. You have a very holy sponsor there. So together with Roy Shin, we will, all of us, renew our baptismal vows. Of course, the answer to each question, should you need reminding, is... I do. So I ask all of you and you, Roshan, do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to Roisin in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith, this is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Could I invite you all please to stand? In a moment I'll invite you all to be silent and still and especially at that moment to pray for Roisin. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for this, his adopted daughter, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon her to confirm her with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform her more fully to Christ, the Son of God. So we pray in silence. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who brought this your servant to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing her from sin. Send upon her, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give her the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill her with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Come and kneel. Carlette, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you and with your spirit. Here we are. Well Shall we give Colette a little round of applause? Continues with our bidding prayers. With unlimited confidence in God and in His love, we present our needs and requests as brothers and sisters with a common Father. For all who exercise ministry in the church and are charged with shepherding the flock of Christ, may the Lord grant them a deep trust and strength in the office they hold. Lord, in your mercy. For those who have lost faith in prayer and trust in God, may they be inspired by the confidence of Abraham and find new joy in God's loving kindness. Lord, in your mercy. For those who are on vacation and resting from strenuous work. May they find this time of peaceful relaxation an opportunity for spiritual growth. Lord, in your mercy. For health and healing, that God will curtail the new coronavirus variants, heal those who are ill, and protect the elderly and very young from the virus. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For all who are ill and for those in special care, may they find happiness through the kindness and support of us all. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For the faithful departed, may they see the Lord face to face and come to rejoice in his presence forever. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. To Our Lady conceived without sin, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In a moment of silence, we pray for Noah, Angeline, and Roisin. God of glory and majesty, teach us to confidently ask, to joyfully seek, to hopefully knock. And when life is difficult, never to grow weary of trusting in your loving ways. Help us to accept your will through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, and through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share together a sign of Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us keep Bernie McGowan in our prayers for whom this Mass was offered. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Your notices for this week, well, first of all, Mass is as normal this week. No changes to the usual pattern. Tomorrow we have the funeral of Joan Taylor, who more normally was at the Saturday Night Mass. That's here at St Rose at half past 11. Might I suggest, it's been on the bulletin board at the back for ages and ages, but might I suggest you have another look at the proposals for the reordering of this area, the sanctuary. The reason being that on Thursday I went to the Art and Architecture Committee, Covid killed this as a project but it's been resurrected and they were happy. So the next stage is a formal application but essentially that pulpit is looking very nervous at the moment, fearing a sledgehammer and that altar that you see there will be moved to here. These steps will be raised to the same level and the actual steps into the sanctuary will be here and there won't be any altar rails. So do have a look. It's been there for ages and ages and ages but do please have another look. A reminder about our film night next Saturday evening, more or less straight after our Saturday evening Vigil Mass, where we will be showing the film The Two Popes, which is a kind of fictional, but obviously based on the reputation of Pope Benedict and Pope Francis, a fictional account of the events surrounding Pope Francis becoming Pope, and certainly it throws all sorts of questions up in the air about the life of the church. Just to inform you, um, I was actually in this church and my mobile rang and it said, as it does, Archbishop Bernard Longley, oh crikey, I thought, here we go, where am I going? However, he's asked me to be the area dean and this is a big job because two deaneries have merged, it's actually 36 parishes there are dioceses which are smaller than that. So I did say to him, especially as I've already got this job as Episcopal Vicar for Religious and commitments every week at the QE Hospital, how on earth am I going to remain sane and fit all this in? But we'll see. So I was appointed effectively last Tuesday and already things have cropped up. So do keep that in prayer. Lastly, of course, Noah and Angeline, congratulations on this, your first communion day. We have certificates for you. Roy Shin, I'm afraid you'll need to speak to Mr. Carroll. I thought he'd left it here, but I can't find it. So have a word with Mr. Carroll. But those of you who made your first communion, many congratulations. And take with you a little certificate. Bless you both. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and proclaim the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.